Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the MSI Mag Quarter Liquid P240 CPU cooler. MSI did send me this product, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. They walk you through some tech specs and features on the backside as well as this side right there. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents, and yes, I double checked the box. I could not find any included product literature. I find that unusual. I don't know, is that a thing now? Everything's just online? Or it could be because this is a sample, or maybe somebody at the factory just had an off day. I don't really know. Here is what was included in the box. LGA 1700 bracket and software right there. Then we have our Intel Legacy and AMD brackets in here with all of our screws for the fans and to mount the radiator, as well as included thermal paste. And it looks like we got a couple splitter cables in there as well too. Moving right along, two identical fans. MSI two ball bearing. And there's the model number for you, 12 volt 0.35 amps. I'm liking how it looks. And then you'll see the other one. Again, they're identical to each other. And then last but not least, we have our radiator right here. Take a look at that MSI logo and branding on it. And then let's look at the housing here. So we can pull this plastic off the top and we'll see the MSI Dragon. And I like that fit and finish on there. Looks pretty sleek. And then you'll see the copper on the other side. So pretty simple and straightforward. Everything we need to get this up and running. So let's go ahead and get this installed. To prepare the cooler for installation, we have to basically add a bracket that's compatible with our AMD motherboard since we're using the AMD Ryzen 7 7700X CPU. The good news is we can leave this bracket on the board and continue to use it. So it makes installation a little bit easier in my opinion. For the cooler itself, basically what you see here is what you're gonna get. So this is gonna go onto the CPU like that and this will mount to the top of our case. So with that being said, I need to make sure to route this wire back this way, out through this channel on the other side. That'll make our life a little bit easier when it comes time to connecting those cables there. And then on the bottom unit, we went ahead, we peeled off the sticker. Make sure you do that before you get this installed. But we have to attach this bracket and it's just going to gently slide in place onto the side just like that and snap right in. So pay attention to how I have it. Those pieces are gonna point up. That's what you need to know. And then it just snaps right in. And then you can press it to remove it if you ever need. But those snap up so this can actually rest flat on the CPU with your thermal paste to actually provide proper cooling. So to get this assembled the rest of the way, then we're gonna take these pieces that you see here that are gonna latch underneath to keep everything firmly in place. So that's what we're dealing with right here. We'll be installing those with these screws. So just line them up like so and gently tighten everything in place. So it should look something like this when you're all done and ready to go. At this step, if you want, you can go ahead and attach your fans. I'm gonna do that for this build. We're gonna get those attached right now. I know where my cables are routing out on the backside, so make sure you don't get confused at this step. You can always wait till you get this installed too, but I like to do it now. So I know where my cables are routing out so I can line my fan up with those holes just like so. And then we can drop these long screws in place. We'll have eight of them to fasten them onto our radiator. And there you go. Now you have one prepped cooler all set and ready to be installed once we get the rest of our core components put into the case. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna install our AIO. So I took the top panel off, again, just two screws and it slides right out. Since we'll be doing a back connect style with this build, It'll be nice to get this out of the way before we even plug and connect the power supply. So to get this installed, first thing we're gonna do, line it up, make sure everything looks good. So that'll go right up at the top, and then this will come down in place right there. So we need to grab our eight screws to fasten this part in 
to the top of our case. So we're gonna line it up just like that with all eight of our screw holes visible and mount it in place. So we're gonna line it up just like this with all eight of our screw holes visible and mount it in place. All right, there we go, nice and snug. Now we're gonna take the fan cables and just route them through the top while we have probably some of the most room to work with at this moment so we can easily get to them once we start putting the top and things back together. Now we're gonna make sure everything lines up how we want it before we put any thermal paste on. And that's looking pretty good. It'll be just like that. And then we'll tighten everything down in place. So those brackets will come up underneath, snap in like they are right there. And ta-da, there we go. So now let's put our thermal compound on. I like to apply it just right in the center, that nice P-shaped amount. All right, looking pretty good there. And now let's line this up and tighten it down. I got the back one in first so we can see a little bit better on the front end here. All right, cool, so they're both in right now and then we're going to take our screwdriver and tighten them down the rest of the way all right so you're going to tighten them until they won't tighten anymore and now we can just kind of position that how we want and get ready to we'll have our gpu to install but before i get any further i want to go ahead and wipe this down with the cloth so hopefully we're not touching it again now it's time for all the rest of the cable so we're going to start up at the top right here this first one is going to be our pump and we're gonna connect that to pump fan one, just like so. And then these two are gonna go, these are the two fans for that radiator. We're gonna connect those to our CPU fan one, and we'll use the included adapter that came with our AIO to connect those. Now we're moving further down in our rat's nest here. We're gonna connect our USB type C right there. The Velcro straps in the way, but that's okay. We'll just kind of push it out of the way a little bit. And then it'll just be nice and gentle, nice and snug. And then we have our USB 3.0 with a nice 90 degree connector right here. Perfect for this setup. Gently press that in place. And then you'll see we got our front panel connector right here, all of it in one piece, which is great. That's gonna go in your JFP1 option. So easy, love when they do that. And then we have, looks like HD audio, that's gonna be right here. Plug that in, there we go. And then we should have our fan cable hiding right here, that's what we got. Do we have room for this? We're gonna connect this to one of our open fan ports. So I see system fan two down here. That might be our best option if we can make it there. Let's do system fan two for that. And then do we have, what do we got here? We got some of our RGB as well too. So if we wanna connect that to our board, looks like we have two options right here. J A R G B V2 1, J A R G B V2 V2. So if we want to use that with our motherboard software, we'll need to connect this to one of those. So let's do that right now. Ta da, there we go. I believe that is every cable. Now, Let's go ahead, let me snap my fingers, and this will be all nice and tidy. Good enough to call it a day. Now let's go ahead, let's plug it in, power it on, and try it out. Here's a close-up of the cooler installed. Take a look. Got our fans spinning and moving there. You can see it from the front. Give you a little bit of that side profile and view right there. And now from the back side, all of those connections we made are actually up here at the top behind this cable and connected directly into the board right there. The pump and CPU fan headers all tucked away. Now it's time to establish a baseline so we can stress this system out. 
So you'll notice at idle, our baseline is going to be 37 degrees Celsius for the CPU at about 25 watts. Our GPU about 29 degrees Celsius at 10 watts. Hardware monitor breaks down a couple more of those temperature values for you, depending on which value you're interested in. And then you'll see task manager just showing the utilization of the CPU and the GPU basically at 1%, as low as it can be in this idle state. Now let's go ahead, let's stress this thing out and see how warm it gets. All right, so our system's been under a full load for over 10 minutes, no issues at all. Everything's very stable as you would expect. Let's look at the CPU first. You're seeing that we peaked at 95 degrees Celsius. Don't worry, that's normal guys. These chips are designed that way, so it's gonna protect your CPU. 100% utilization, 95 degrees Celsius, 133 watts, and we're still getting 4.6 gigahertz for our cpu so great to see that there next you'll see our gpu we're at 73 degrees celsius we peaked at that temp 318 watts and our full utilization there nothing out of range everything as you would expect it to be well within spec and not providing any issues nice stable and reliable whether it's idling or it's being stressed out at 100%. All right, with the thermal cam out, thought we'd take a look now and see how warm the build's getting when it's fully stressed. Now I did take the panels off, but as you'd expect, the GPU is gonna be the hottest and warmest thing, but seeing a lot of heat being dissipated all around the motherboard as well. Surprisingly, our cooler, as you would probably expect, doing really well thought that might be a little bit warmer than it is it's great to see doing an adequate job on the cpu go underneath the gpu get a feel for some more of those measurements there and you may have noticed the bearings on the case fans a little bit warm in the center here's a look from the side our hot spot down at the bottom for our gpu and our power supply as expected there's the io shield on the back side not too shabby and then here's a look at the back side so a lot of heat from the motherboard on the back that's where all of our headers are that we're connected to like our cpu up at the top Main board power down here. See that hot spot there. The rest of our cables at the bottom. And the power supply. Pretty cool. So far, so good with our MSI Mag Core Liquid AIO. Count me impressed. No issues at all with the installation process. Very simple and straightforward. We did an AMD build, but they give you everything you need for multiple Intel generations as well. The only thing I'd want to see improved or changed in the future is really just having those fans by default also have ARGB options so we could match the rest of our bill because we chose an MSI case after all. So that's the only thing I feel like it's missing is because we have these four included fans with our case. It'd be nice if they were matching. Now I know we can swap that out, but for just a couple of bucks more, since we're already getting two fans anyways, I'd like to see that option with this by default. I mean, I could say I'd love to see some LEDs or RGBs or little mini displays on the cooler as well too, but that just starts to really change the price point and feature set for what this AIO is. But so far, so good, keeping everything nice and cool and well within spec. And I expect that to last for years to come.